So earlier today, we were all met with the blockbuster trade that saw Pierre-Luc Dubois and the Columbus Blue Jackets 2022 third round pick head over to the Winnipeg Jets in exchange for Patrick Laine and Jack Roslovich. This trade is a massive one and arguably the biggest trade since that crazy day back in 2016 that saw Hall for Larson and Subban for Weber. Today, we are going to be seeing if the trade would even go through on NHL 21 and also simulating the season to see if either Dubois or Laine can make a push for the Stanley Cup with their new teams. So we're going to hop into the NHL 21 stuff real quick and after all that I am going to give my thoughts on this deal as a whole. So here on NHL 21 franchise mode controlling the Columbus Blue Jackets and replicating the exact trade the Winnipeg Jets do not go through with the deal and expect a lot more for Line A than what the Jackets are willing to give up. On the flip side using the Winnipeg Jets and approaching the Columbus Blue Jackets about Pierre-Luc Dubois the Jackets also reject the trade, so it looks like here on NHL 21, this trade would never happen. However, it did happen in real life, and now we will be putting Dubois on the Jets and Line and Roslovich on the Blue Jackets and simming the 2020-2021 NHL season. Before we get into it, I am recreating the divisions for this season, so Dubois will be in the Canadian division, oh wait, sorry, the Scotiabank North division, and Line will be in the new Discover Central division. Obviously here on NHL 21, sadly they still will be playing all 30 other teams, but come playoff time, the matchup should be more accurate. Now let's sim to the trade deadline and see how Dubois and Line are doing with their new teams. So at the trade deadline, the Columbus Blue Jackets are struggling and sitting at 7th in the Central Division. Patrick Line so far through 61 games has scored 26 goals and 20 assists for 46 points, and it looks like he will once again in his career hit the 30 goal mark. The Jets in the North Division are having a better season than the Columbus Blue Jackets and are sitting at 5th in a very tight division. Pierre-Luc Dubois is having the better season of the two so far, and with the Jets, he has 22 goals and 31 assists for 53 points so far. Now let's send to the end of the season and see if these two guys' teams will make the playoffs. So the Jackets do end up finishing in the Central Division at 7th overall and miss out on the playoffs. Line A finishes the season as Columbus's leader in points with 31 goals and 34 assists for 65 points. His season saw him on the top line for Columbus with Max Domi and Gustav Nyquist, which isn't terrible, but probably not as good as what he would have had in Winnipeg. Anyway, not a bad season for Line A, and after the playoffs, we will be seeing if he remains in Columbus. Back over to the Jets, they end up at third in the North Division and make the playoffs. Dubois has the better season of the two and the best season of his career with 29 goals and 42 assists for 71 points. In Winnipeg, Dubois seems to have a much better supporting cast around him as he got to play on the Jets' second line between Brian Little and Nikolai Ehlers. Now let's see how the Jets do in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So the Flames end up facing off with the Jets in the first round and sadly take them out in seven games. Pierre-Luc Dubois does have a good series and in the seven games he puts up two goals and six assists for eight points. The rest of the playoffs see the Boston Bruins winning the Stanley Cup over the Colorado Avalanche in five games and the awards see McDavid with the Art Ross, Hart and Ted Lindsay award, Carlson with the Norris, Kuznetsov the Lady Bing, Shesterkin the Calder, Marshan the Conn Smythe, Bobrovsky the Vezina and William M. Jennings, Dowdy the Bill Masterton, the Wild Coach gets the Jack Adam, Kopitar the Selkie, and Patty Kane gets the Maurice Richard. At the end of the season, Jarmo Kekalainen does end up holding on to his fellow Finn, and Patrick Laine signs a long 7-year deal with the Blue Jackets worth $8.7 million per year. So there you guys have it, this is how EA has the whole Patrick Laine and Pierre-Luc Dubois trade going. Obviously this isn't real and probably won't even be accurate, but it was still fun to do. Now I just want to give you guys my thoughts real quick on the trade. First off, if I'm being honest, I am confused. If Dubois was planning to leave all along, I don't understand why he signed the contract to just come out and show zero effort. On the other side of things, I don't think trading Patrick Laine is really a great move for the Jets. I understand the organization and Laine have basically been moving towards this for a while now, but it is sad they couldn't work anything out. Laine, I truly believe, is a future 40-50 to 50 goal scorer, and that is something that isn't easy to find in the NHL or replace. Depth down the center is something that is very important in today's NHL, and with Dubois being a center, it does probably bring his value up, but still, I think this is a mistake on the Jets' part. They also gave up Roslovich, who is a first-rounder from 2015, and I believe he already signed a deal, so that's good for them. He is from Columbus, so I think it's safe to say the Blue Jackets definitely got at least one guy in this trade who is okay with being there. But yeah, honestly, I'm just confused and also disappointed. It sucks to see Line leave the Jets, and also, I'm disappointed with how Dubois handled everything. There's definitely more to the story as to why he wanted out. Hopefully, we hear that soon. If I had to predict a winner of the trade, I am going to say the Jets. Dubois has another year and a much better lineup around him than Line A, and like I said, center depth is huge in the NHL. That's all I gotta say on this. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this video, who you think won the trade. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.